hi guys welcome back to the channel welcome if you're new I'm Stacy and tonight we are going to use one of my cards from my um, fantastic amazing wonderful color cubes that I got fantastic color cubes um, this is the volume two or the volume one color cube and they are made by Sarah Renee Clark you can find her on YouTube and she has a website um, I picked card 29 uh, it took a hot minute to draw it out because I wanted to get it I want to feel I want it to feel loose and vibrant and beautiful not quite as dark as all this <clears throat> and I'm not gonna paint in the little weight of raindrops but I am gonna try to stick to these kinds of colors I'm going to use these cards as a guide. They're not the Bible. They're, they're just a guide to get me going, to get me started on a piece down the road. If I feel like I want to pull in other colors, I will. But for the most part, I'm going to try to stick to these. I'm going to set this guy up here. When I, st I started with my mechanical pencil, and I have out my brushes, my two brushes that I always use, my friends. Um, Princeton round number 18, the Neptune series and then round number eight Princeton Neptune as well these are my go-to watercolor brushes for most of my paintings um, I started with circle templates I used I cut out some paper into circles to use for drawings because I want to create some round pieces and I drew a round circle there and then I used my circle stencil to draw a smaller round circle there to help keep the petals on the flower uniform all the way around. Um, nothing in nature is perfect, but a little bit of uniformity is nice, right? Even in the reference photo, one side of the flower looks a little shorter than the other. It's a very rough, um, rough circle, but for the most part, <clears throat> I think we got it. I'm going to go in with my 18, and this is Fit Fluid 100. Um, 300 pound paper so I don't have it taped down I don't find that to be necessary with the 300 pound paper it never buckles so much that it bothers me I am going to maybe use the smaller brush to get in between the petals with a nice amount of water so that our background flows the way I want it to. I want it to look all soft and misty. Like that. Working quickly but carefully to get between these petals, these white petals, without going over the edges. I really wasn't feeling like using any kind of um, masking fluid on this big flower that'd be a lot of masking fluid and this paper doesn't really handle that very well at all so keeping that in mind I decided to go wet into wet for my background and work around the flower kind of carefully like so get in here I don't want it to be oh, nuts. I just boom, splurged on my flower. Well, we'll see what it does. If it makes a mess, we'll fix it in the moment. Alright. And there is our super boring to watch wedding end series. Alright. <clears throat> now my sap green is very close to the dark green in here. So I'm going to pull out my sap green. And I normally mix my purples here, but we're going to go with the greens here. Some water. And then this cobalt green is very close to this. And if we thin it out, it will be vibrant like that. And then we can put a little yellow in it, I guess. And that will lean it this way more. There we go. See? That's pretty close. And then we're going to go ahead and throw in our background. 
these colors. And when I say throw in, I mean throw in. We're not, I'm not trying to be super fussy about it. Maybe tilt the page a bit. Get those colors bleeding around. Super fun. Get it in there. There it goes. Didn't want to go in that corner. Get in between these guys. Kind of got a little dry in there. Like that. And then down here. Like that. Another tilt. Going with some brighter green. That'll give the give it a little bit of visual interest, right? Get those edges just right because my painting is like Goldilocks in the three bears. She likes everything just right. Anybody else think she sounds like a spoiled little thing? Or is it just me? Christy, Christy. Alright, I'm going to change the battery. I'm going to take a heat tool to this and dry it so that when I'm working on the flower, I don't get the background colors in my flower. So, I'll be right back. Now that the background's a little more, it's not completely dry, but it's a little more dry, we're going to work on the flower for a little bit. I'm thinking I might want to go a little dark on the background behind the flower. Um, but I'm going to decide that at the end. For right now, we're going to get in, we're going to do our center. I'm going to go ahead and put in some water right here. All the way around. Kind of haphazard around the edges because it, it's got a little green bleed out around the edges. Which I'm not, I mean I like it a lot. I'm going to take... It's much more bright than that. This green. And just... Drop it in. Around that edge. It isn't uniform, and it's not super bright, but it's enough of a glow that I wanted to definitely get in. <laughs> Sorry about that. A little more bright yellow than that. Give it a little more. Yeah, that's better. More yellow green feel. Like so. Okay. And then this is Azo Yellow. It's a little more vibrant than the yellow that we've got going on. Maybe we could put a little, let's put a little gamboge in it. That's what I normally do just to earth it down a little bit. Yeah, that's a nice yellow. Throw the gamboge in there. That per that's almost perfect. Yeah, I dig it. Maybe we'll just go with Gamboge. Actually, I'm feeling like the Azo down first. 
and then drying that would be a better idea. And then drying this little spot and going back on top of it with the gamboge to make it more earthy. All the way around like that. Because the Azo has that super vi vibrant bright glow, which I totally dig. That. And we'll dry it. Okay. Now it's all dry. I'm going to get a smaller brush for. Do I want, I want this longer one? This has nice long bristles on it. This is a Robert Simmons Sapphire series. Uh, I can't read that little writing down there, but it's around number four. It has slightly longer. Um, bristles and not as full body as this, this one. So I feel like it'll give me nice shadow lines and give me some con of that control that I want when making marks in the center of my flower. Because the center of the flower is basically little, little round dots. Turn it to get different. Right? There's more clusters here and there. And just tap, 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 going around and around. Thinned out a bit here. Let's do. Let's do a little bit of a thin down. Nope, that's too muddy. I don't like it. Let's pick that up. Go in with the inkier consistency, and that will give you um, better control if you don't add as much water to your paint, obviously, um, and use an inkier consistency. And get more details. And don't be afraid to change the size of your brush too, if you've got a set of brushes, like you got a, a little, little ones and big ones, you know, they're there for a reason. Grab one. Try it out, see what marks it'll make on your page. Kind of separating the bristles now, that makes that makes it nice. It's giving me different little textures which I'm digging. Brush got too dry. If your brush gets too dry, just wet it and then dry it off a little bit and then pick up more pigment. I know it sounds um, well, it's not intuitive to do that, but it does work. Let some of that yellow gold, don't cover it all up yet, let that light glow that we put down. I tend to do that too, I get carried away with layer on layer. And um, <coughs> I don't let my, my softer layers glow through. I know this seems super time consuming, but watercolor is, um, if you're truly like taking your time and learning the craft, it is time consuming. Um, there's lots of time times when I'm doing a piece, I won't record it because it takes so long to do the piece, you have to wait for the paper to dry naturally, and sometimes that can take all day, or it can take just an hour. Um, but having patience when you're doing this kind of stuff is kind of super crucial. Going back in with that Azo. Get some bright spots going on where it kind of got a little muddy.
But I, that is where I, my failings come when I'm trying to do a watercolor piece and it's not turning out the way I want it to, it's because I'm not being patient enough. I'm trying to make the, the paint do what probably an acrylic could do, or I'm feeling like I need more immediate satisfaction with my piece. Maybe I should be using a different medium if I'm feeling that way. You know, I should be using pastels or something, or um, oil paint, or gouache be even because they're all more immediately satisfying mediums for me. Okay, I'll leave that alone, let it dry a little bit. We do have a little bit of shadowing going on over here, but I'm gonna put that in after that dries. Right now I'm gonna use our, our pale blue-gray color. How do I wanna do this? I think I'm gonna I think I'm going to get some clean water because I want to wet the petal and then drop the gray on and let it bleed out a little bit and that's not going to be effective with green water. <laughs> One sec. Okay, we got our clean water. I'm going to grab that small brush, dip it in the clean water. Wet this petal. Just this section. I'm going to work section by section, I think. Otherwise it's going gonna, gonna to dry too fast for my taste. And then this guy is part of this group. And I need to fix this little bit of green that's decided to be in there. I'll just blot that up like so. And there we go. Alright, and then we're going to take our super pale blue gray. Pull it up that way. That petal. I'm zoom in. The glare from my light is making it so that you guys can't see what I'm doing. Maybe if I it's super light. It's super light. Purposefully. Maybe I should go a little darker. What do you guys think? Be bold. It is going to dry a lot lighter. I want it to read as a white petal, but white is never white, you guys. White is never just white. darker on this one. Like that. We'll see how it dries. We'll see how it dries. Good. Okay. I'm going to skip this petal for now. Come in here and do this one. I'm 
And if you feel like things are bleeding around too much for you, you can just do one petal at a time. Do like every other petal. Maybe don't wet it all like this. Maybe you just go in and do do your line work with strictly um, uh, wet on dry. It gives you more control. I'm not looking to control this painting at all. I just want to play with watercolor and see what it'll do. little raggedy on the top. Oops. Let's grab your own color. Not that it would have been the end of the world. Because white does reflect the colors around it. Oh, more neutral tint in that. I have green in my neutral tint. There we go. There we go. That's a little better. definitely go in like this and then because it's dry right there where I just put that paint well relatively speaking and then just gently pull it where you want it to be soften it out and if you get a spot that's too dark say I don't, I don't like this darkness on this edge of that petal right there just wet it like this grab a clean cloth this is clean, it just doesn't, it's very stained. And press down. Press down pretty hard, let it absorb your mess. For the most part, it'll pick up. See? Lighten that a little bit. And then you can go in and darken that shadow because this petal is on top of this one. We can put a little dark in there. Like that. Pull that down. And then wet the brush and kind of blend it out like that. And that push, pushes that lighter petal forward and push, sends that one back. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I love painting. I love painting. It's so much fun. And this petal could be pretty dark on this edge. Right here. Come in and soften that out. Yeah. If you don't like the dry brush effect, you can just wet the paper and pick it up and dry it, blend it out so that it doesn't leave those textures on your flowers. I don't mind that, I think it looks pretty. 
soften that crisp line out a little bit. We're going to continue doing this all the way around the petals, so if you guys want to skip forward, I guess I could time lapse this part. And don't be afraid to turn your paper so that you can better control your line, what you're working on. This petal wet. That blue gray, just softly, gently put in some textures and folds in that flower. Give our pretty flower some sass. I have to come back to that part at the end. <clears throat> well, I'm trying to do my darkest darks right now. When I can do that at the very end of the painting. This flower is flower petal is back behind all the way up. dry brush and just pick that up like that. There we go. Ta -da. I dig it. Alright. little eraser thing keeps rolling around. Maybe, maybe we could use the bigger brush for wetting the area because it's faster. Like that. Then use the little brush for putting in the shadows. Light, light shadows. This back pedal. Pretty dark. Right through there. Let's soften some of this out. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's pretty. I like it soft like that. That is nice. I'm going to soften some of those blends. Yeah. I dig it. Alright. Moving right along. Let's do these guys next. Got this one big petal right here in the forefront. And then there's this guy that's not. Down to 
this very wet area like that. Not too wet. Kind of see how darkening this edge of this back petal. I'm just picking up the wetness on this front petal and letting that bleed out. That looks nice. I dig that. Now that this one's a little more dry, we can come in and put in another, another little bit like that. Then soften it down like that. White petals on white petals. Ugh. Ugh, the subtlety of it all. <laughs> okay. Looks a little more. Oh, it's got green in it, I forgot. Go along this edge here where it's not contaminated. And put a little blue in it. And this is my neutral tint mixed with ultramarine. I love ultramarine. It's a great color. It's fantastic. Okay, super thinned out. Here. When I say soften an edge, I mean you're basically just blending it out with water until it's, it doesn't read as a color anymore. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Almost done. We're like halfway there, you guys. Look at this. Alright, I'll go over here. Let's clean up the edge of this petal a little bit. Give it a little scrub. Clean that brush really good. Dry it pretty good. Then I'm going to try and pick it up with the brush instead of a rag. Well, maybe not. That's a little better. Okay. Moving on. Wet this flower. And this flower. Flower. Petal. I'm alright. I took my melatonin already. I'm feeling it. I think I'm feeling it a little bit. <laughs> I meant to be in bed by now. I just think that's so pretty. That's gonna dry really nice. And the further I get on the flower, the more I like it. Okay. I'm feeling more confident with my practice. The farther I go. Which is, you know, pretty nice, right? Getting cocky. Getting a little cocky with my skills. Probably not doing as good as I think I am, <laughs> but that's all right. Maybe pick up a little 
bit of that. There. Can I spin this again? Oh yeah, I'm really digging it now. I haven't looked up in the camera in a while. Alright, I'm pretty happy. Let's get some water down on this petal. This loner over here, this stray dude. Come back in. Get this section painted in right here. I currently just realized I have a paint for <laughs> I have a paintbrush for color and I have a paintbrush for water. And I'm switching back and forth as if I were color penciling. It's interesting. It's interesting. Just caught myself. Got some yellow in this petal. It's alright, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I think I have a little bit of yellow in some of the petals, right? We'll, we'll pretend like we did it on purpose. Pull it out like that. Because if you do it once, it's a mistake, but if you do it more than once, it's a design element. And that is the story we tell ourselves to justify the boo-boos that we make in watercolor. <laughs> And then we need to do this petal and then we're going to do our final deep dark highlights and be done. And I think it's the deep dark highlights that are going to really make it feel right. You know what I'm saying? I mean... Did I say deep dark highlights? Oh, deep dark shadows. I'm alright. <laughs> okay. And I'll just pull that down like that. Oh, we get too dark. Yeah. Okay. Good, good. And then put that guy down. Come in with our deep dark. Now letting that line fade out as I go up like that. So I don't want it to be crazy prominent everywhere. Let's dry that off a bit. Just 
switched over to just the olive at this point. This feels right for this little pocket here of shadow stuff that we're doing. Yeah, that makes all the difference in the world. And so good. Oh yeah. Makes all the difference in the world. Just a bit here and there where the petals really are meeting edges and creating any kind of super dark area. Well, once again, don't get too crazy with it. Because it'll look out of place. There. Oops. That line down. Just a little bit there. There. I don't think I want to do too much more than that. Right? Yeah, I take that. Okay. Paper's too wet for that. Mm, it's way too much water. Got carried away. It's all right. I'm just fussing about at this point. Probably should just stop. I don't ruin the piece completely. Just a little dark glaze. Yeah, I like that. Okay. 
and I'm just super fussing at this point. I'll zoom back out. Yeah, I'm gonna stop fussing. Otherwise, I'm gonna completely ruin the piece. Let's pick up some of this excess water right here. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I do wanna do a little, just a little bit of shadowing. Here and there, like that, and then gently blot. Okay, done fussing with that. Put that down. I really do have a pretty heavy spot of green right there. Just got crazy again. And actually, um, truth be told, my instincts is to let this completely dry and come back at it tomorrow and put a soft layer of pan pasta on this background and really, really make it matte and less intense. But I won't. I'm just going to leave it. And this is the, this is our daisy painting. This is our reference photo. Come on, there we go. And then this is our piece. It's pretty good. I mean, I'm happy with it. For my first pure watercolor piece for the year, I'm going to call it a thumbs up. Good job, Stacey. <laughs> um... Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I would love to hear from you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!